the rest of the story. Berg was dying, an abdominal aortic aneurysm, the doctors called it. What it meant was that at any moment a blood vessel in his gut might explode and he would bleed to death. May 29, 1972, the moment came. Berg was 70 years old. He left no estate, none at all. And yet the diary he never wrote, I'm about to read to you. Because, you see, Berg was a spy. Among the most remarkable in the annals of the Office of Strategic Services. Until today, you may never have heard of him. From this day on, I think you will never forget him, for this is the rest of the story. Berg was hired by the OSS in the white heat of the Second World War. His modest $3,800 a year salary in no way reflected his prodigious qualifications. He was intelligent. He was charming. He could become instantly inobtrusive when circumstances required it. He was a gifted linguist. His fluency extended beyond the basics. French, German, Spanish, and Portuguese, and Italian, all the way to Japanese and Hebrew, Greek, even Latin, and Sanskrit. Berg's first assignment came only days after his OSS application was completed. At first, he worked closely with Operative William Horrigan, who had been training agents in Algiers. Horrigan needed a partner for the more delicate jobs, a bright, competent fellow he had asked to be paired with. To Horrigan's delight, Berg became that partner. Their OSS code names were Romulus and Remus. Late in 1943, they were assigned to Project Larsen, which was designed to sneak rocket scientists out of Italy and transport them safely to the United States. In January of the following year, Horrigan was transferred to Burma to lay the groundwork for the Mountbatten invasion. At last, Berg was, as he was most comfortable, on his own. In possession of the most sensitive government secrets, he took extraordinary measures to protect them. Operations took him to exotic locations from Bari to Istanbul, and yet he was never completely comfortable, it was said, except in the company of OSS colleagues. And then after the war, the OSS was disbanded. Berg was offered the ultimate reward, the Medal of Freedom, but he declined. He declined. From some notes he once scrawled on the back of an envelope, we now know why. What good was such a prize, he suggested, if he could never tell anyone what he had done to get it. And so to his dying day, Berg remained faithful to the organization that was no more for the secrets he had learned during his years with the OSS died with him. His ashes are buried in a cemetery near Newark, New Jersey. It's even been suggested that late in 1944, Berg was assigned to assassinate a certain German physicist should he reveal dangerous A-bomb-related data in Zurich. We can only imagine all else that he did. Yet the most astonishing detail of Berg's life has nothing to do with espionage. It relates to his 17 years long professional life prior to his days and nights of cloak and dagger. You see, Berg, Moe Berg, the brilliant linguist and super spy that you've just met before he was a spy, you could have met most any summer day at the ballpark where Moe was a big league catcher for the Washington Senators and the Boston Red Sox. Now you know the rest of the story.